So we have a couple really good Bitcoin news stories today. Bitcoin price is up 13.6% since tax season came to an end. Yes, I called the bottom of the market. Not that it was particularly hard this time, and it's not particularly hard when I'm not pretending to be an expert, and I'm always calling the bottom. This is the bottom right now. Bitcoin will never get lower. It's a good time to buy. Buy, buy, buy. But yes, the decline from 20000 recently as low as 6,000 with some low spikes there was was quite a depressing one for a lot of bitcoiners uh th there were some some nervousness there i suppose from the true believers like myself we knew that in the long run this was going to be another thing that the cryptocurrency market would shrug off i'm excited that it came so soon and we're seeing that this year it really has been motivated by a lot of people not wanting to buy in before taking care of their taxes so with tax day pushed back the bitcoin bump re uh invigoration has been uh, pushed back a couple days as well but now it is performing well in the market today as it tests the nine thousand dollar mark and from cnbc.com bitcoin nipping at gold demand gold has surpassed many challengers over the centuries as a go-to safe haven investment some investors say bitcoin is the challenger with the best chance of dethroning gold as the globe's ultimate source of value for centuries, gold has held a unique role as a form of currency, a store of value, and sometimes a speculative or alternative asset to stocks and bonds. No other asset has managed to retain such an allure over time. And over the centuries, there have been other pretenders for gold's throne, salt, florins, ducats, anyone, but none has survived. The latest potential competitor for gold may be Bitcoin, the cryptocurrency created in 2009 as open source software for a decentralized form of payment. So uh, I, I've been getting a lot of questions about this recently because for many years, people who questioned the uh, government narrative and the government-sponsored banking racket or the banking-sponsored government racket, depending on how you want to see it, have long been fans of getting away from fiat currency. And pre-Bitcoin, really the only uh, viable option was uh was gold and silver i should say options were uh but precious metals you know and it's if it was if you wanted to uh to be investing securely if you wanted to have some hedge against inflation you would buy gold and silver and hope that they would go up and by and large they've done great over the years because they were that backstop and i think it's clear now though um and, and, and I say this with, with all due respect to my friend Anthem Blanchard, who, who's working on, on various gold-related uh, digital assets. I think there's going to be some role for those for a number of years. But ultimately, uh, metals will never be able to compete with cryptocurrencies for function as currency. There's never. And right now, uh, I would not uh, advise putting all of your life into crypto. Um, just because it, it not only is it a volatile market, I, I think overall cryptos are an extremely safe investment. Uh, any singular cryptocurrency may be a risky investment. Uh, you could say that any one of them, even Bitcoin itself, could be a risky investment and that hypothetically it, it could go to zero uh, re relatively speaking overnight. Uh, I think the overnight scenarios are, are, are almost impossible, but uh, certainly with the volatility of the market, uh, it, w it would not make sense to have uh, all of your holdings in a single cryptocurrency. But a diversified crypto portfolio certainly is a much better investment than the stock market or gold and silver. But because of the volatility, because of the potential to be disconnected from your stash of cryptocurrency, uh, I think it's still important to have a store of something in physical holdings. So I think there is a role right now for gold and silver, I have a small emergency emergency stash of gold and silver, but that's all it is. It, it's like an emergency cushion, like you would have, a, you know, a handful of silver ounces, a few ounces of gold, uh, you know, a, a good supply of, of guns and bullets, and of course, all of your basic survival needs. And that's just a general recommendation to be disaster ready. But for the economic disaster, you know, having some things that are readily uh, sellable or tradable uh, should we end up with a society without a functioning monetary system in terms of a government fiat or a, a cryptocurrency and, and again i think these scenarios are extremely rare 
So you're really better off investing as much as possible in things that are going to provide you return. And right now, cryptocurrency is just uh, the best asset class for that by far. And speaking of gold and fiat currency, the shift towards gold and its uh, rise in value over the last several decades it is more a measure of the decline of fiat currencies. And now we see even governments reacting to this reality that faith in fiat currencies is failing. And from ZeroHedge.com, Turkey will repatriate all gold from the United States in an attempt to ditch the dollar. After Venezuela, Germany, Austria, and the Netherlands prudently repatriated a substantial portion, if not all, of their physical gold held at the New York Fed or other Western central banks in recent years, this morning Turkey also announced that it has decided to repatriate all its gold stored in the U.S. Federal Reserve and deliver it to the Istanbul Stock Exchange, according to reports in Turkey's Yeni Safak. It won't be the first time Turkey has asked the New York Fed to ship the country's gold back. In recent years, Turkey repatriated 220 tons of gold from abroad, of which 28.7 tons was brought back from the U.S. last year. And it's a fun story to study. Like, How did this gold end up in all these places in the first place. According to the latest IMF data, Turkey's gold reserves are estimated at 591 tons, worth just over $23 billion. This makes Ankara the 11th largest gold holder behind the Netherlands and ahead of India. And this is what I thought was really interesting about the story because it relates to the relationship between cryptocurrency and gold and fiat currency and understanding who controls what. Now, in the realm of cryptocurrency, there are some still great disparities of wealth, obviously because the people who invested early, who invested in these systems, in many ways made huge amounts of money and are now sitting on very, very valuable piles of coin, or they may have liquidated into other assets at this point. But the promise of cryptocurrencies, of decentralized, transparent systems that are controlled by networks, that are voluntary instead of by governments is a huge market advantage. I would rather put up with the imbalances in the cryptocurrency market than the imbalances that result from uh, governments controlling currency and controlling gold reserves. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube. And you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your post and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at and we'll share it on my feed.